aside from the few oil companies having their aircraft, or, there, that was just about the extent of the field. So we picked up about 18 or 19 companies. From the beginning, over six decades ago, growing America's economy in small towns and large, business aviation has meant and continues to mean business. Well, NBA was created shortly after World War II. And the purpose then and the purpose today is really to create an environment that allows business aviation to thrive. Business flying was just in its lowest infancy. Well, Walter Pegg is, is our link to the origins of NBAA. The individual at Bristol Myers, Palmer Lathrop, I received the first correspondence from uh, having to do with an organization to represent corporate aviation. The basic mission of NBAA has remained exactly the same, and that is to promote and foster and improve the health of this industry throughout the world. Originally we called the organization Corporation Aircraft Owners Association. The CAOA later became the National Business Aircraft Association in 1953. Then the National Business Aviation Association in 1997. Business aviation really makes American business work. In the heartland is a growing, thriving community, Ankeny, Iowa, which depends on business aviation for its continued opportunities and prosperity. We are a very fast growing community, and because we have an airport, the third busiest airport in the state of Iowa, we need to capitalize on the opportunities that we have. I believe that general aviation gives people that entrepreneurial spirit, gives them an opportunity to look to the future and know that it's bright because of general aviation. Clay Lacey owns and operates Clay Lacey Aviation in Van Nuys, California and Seattle, Washington. With over six decades and 53,000 hours of flying experience, business aviation is job one. Business aviation is all about time. Uh, time wasted can never be recovered. Time saved uh, can be used for another project. Many times you can do as much in a business aircraft in one day as you can do flying airlines in a week. Time means everything. Musco Lighting makes it happen from the heartland in Oskaloosa, Iowa. Musco lights the world at sporting and international events. Their business aircraft is a core asset in their success for 40 years. We've probably done projects in somewhere between 60 and 75 countries around the world. You know, Wimbledon, Yankee Stadium, Churchill Downs, uh, we lit the Washington Monument. A critical moment in our history was the Michigan at Notre Dame football game. I got a call at 4.30 in the afternoon on a Monday from ABC TV and they suddenly wanted to move forward with the project. I asked him how much time we had to think about it and he said, well, we have to make the decision tomorrow morning. I hopped in the plane and flew myself to Ann Arbor, Michigan and met with them. By that noon, they had chosen us to light the stadium. The national appetite for college football justifying advanced technology to produce sufficient portable lighting Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to a first. The night the lights went on at Notre Dame Stadium. With six of these massive towers from Musco Sport Lighting casting a daylight light glow over Notre Dame Stadium. Aviation and the ability to get there when you need to get there is the core of being able to build anything. Nothing runs like a deer. John Deere, that is. In Moline, Illinois, for over 170 years. And we're one of the five oldest companies on the New York Stock Exchange. We are the only uh, agricultural equipment business that has, through that whole time frame, not merged with anybody else. It's been purely John Deere. Imagine ourselves in 1948. It was principally a U.S.-based business, and the core of the company was here in Moline, Illinois. And the ability to use this uh, new capability, business aviation, as a business tool to shorten the communication, 
shorten the decision making uh, was a real foundation for us. As you move into the 60s and 70s and we start moving overseas, uh, we use general aviation to be able to leverage our business outside the United States. We have about 60-65% of our employees live and work outside the United States. We are deep into the feeding the world, growing the business rel relative to that in, in many parts of the world. It's a great time to be associated with agriculture. Farmers everywhere are the same and so staying in Moline from our heritage keeps us linked to that environment. You know, in the last 30 days, I've been in Brazil, uh, China, Sub-Saharan Africa, and Europe. And you just can't do that without business aviation. It is a tool that allows us to reach these far reaches of the world and build a foundation for growth. The speed with which business operates today, the speed with which we have to make decisions, it's almost impossible to do that without business aviation. Manitoba Corporation is located in Buffalo, New York. Since 1916, Manitoba has been in the recycling business and owes its survival today to owning a business aircraft. My title is CEO and I do anything and everything that needs to be done. My family's been in the recycling business. I'm third generation. We're an old line company with a wonderful reputation. Primarily, we've evolved in recycling of non-ferrous metals primarily copper. And our job is to make metal ready for a furnace, which is the next step in the recycling. And the Western New York had an exodus of industry. And I owned a small single engine airplane, a beach debonair. We went out with that airplane and started doing some business. We moved up to more sophisticated airplanes and eventually ended up in a Mitsubishi MU2, which is our current airplane. But all these airplanes allowed us to find additional business. I was invited to testify to the Senate Finance Committee regarding the user fee issue in the summer of 08. They had the misconception that business aviation consisted strictly of large flight departments and executives flying to the Super Bowl in their aircraft. Um, I put a different face on it for them because our aircraft uh, is a working tool. Apogee Physicians, located in Phoenix, Arizona, whose pledge is, what's best for the patient is best for the practice, has a national reach using business aviation. So our field focuses on hospitalists, and these are doctors who are dedicated to taking care of patients inside the hospital. If you're cared for by an Apogee hospitalist, your physician's gonna be in the hospital every day, all day. We looked at the option of buying and operating a private plane. And when we looked at the cost of operating that plane versus the cost of these regional offices, coupled with my desire to actually know the people I work with, uh, it was kind of a slam dunk. And now we find ourselves needing three airplanes more often than not. I'll tell you what my wife said to me when I first bought the Hawker. She said, Michael, you didn't buy that airplane so you could be home more. You bought it so you could work more. Shortly after I got the airplane, I'd had it for about a year, I got a call from American Express. They were very concerned that my credit card had been used fraudulently. I said, okay, well, I'm very concerned about that, too. What's going on? I said, we're showing you had five different rental cars in five different states yesterday. I go, nope, that was me. So I don't care what business you run, whether it's large or small, you will be faced with problems. And looking someone in the eye and telling them that, they, that you will take care of it means a lot more than a conference call or an email ever could. Tradewind Aviation, located in Oxford, Connecticut, offers charter services throughout the world. Recently, they flew a different kind of mission, providing humanitarian relief and rescue during Haiti's devastating earthquake. Really, our involvement in Haiti was uh, kind of a combination of two different things. One was uh, being in the right place at the right time, and, and the other was uh, having an extraordinary group of, uh, group of people who were organizing the, the response in Haiti. I think Haiti was a, was a great example of the kind of responsiveness and flexibility that we can provide in the industry because we were literally landing airplanes on roadways, not runways. The destruction in Laagan was so much greater that, I mean, these were people that, you know, until we brought tarps in, had nothing to sleep under. Until we brought food in, had nothing to eat. We were flying four flights a day from Santiago into Laagan uh, with two caravans, uh, which equates to about 16,000 pounds of supplies. You know, each day they, they greeted us with a smile. Everyone was happy and, and so grateful for everything we everything and anything we could bring them. The thing that will stick in my mind the most was how fortunate we were to be in the right place at the right time with the right resources. 
Well, NBA will continue to be a very important uh, part of uh, business aviation in the future. You know what it means to me? Very simple. No plane, no gain. People need to understand. No plane, no gain in our job base. No plane, no gain. No plane, no gain for small and mid-sized communities. No plane, no gain. No plane, no productivity enhancements for small and mid-sized companies. No plane, no gain. No plane, no gain. So I believe strongly in no plane, no gain because I lived the other side of that. We have a plane, we have gained. No plane, no gain in our humanitarian outreach. No plane, no gain. Business aviation is essential. No plane, no gain. I'm Arnold Palmer and I approve this message simply because it's true.